Welcome to a Second Chance at Life podcast. I'm your host, Arvilla Beckworth, and welcome to another episode. This week, I wanted to get a little bit deep, especially for my working moms. You know how it is when you're trying to find work-life balance, and it seems like you can't find neither one. Well, today I got an expert. I'm a bringer on, my girl, Atoya. Atoya, how are you today? I am doing good. How are you, girl? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on. Listen, thank you for having me. I love everything that you do, so I'm honored to be a part. <laughs> thank you. And I was going to tell you, girl, you're walking that white, that white hat, that white. I don't know if it's cream, but it looked white on my end. Yes, girl. I love it. Listen, I tell people a lot of time, I love to wear white on camera because it just makes me feel lively. <laughs> yes. It's it bringing your skin cone. I'm like, look at her. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You are welcome. Well, without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this sensitive subject, but must need a conversation. Yes, yes. Before I start, please tell my listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay, sure. So um, first, Arvilla, again, just thank you so much for having me on. And you're right. This is a much, much needed um, conversation. And I could not be more excited to be here and to actually be talking about finding work-life balance as a working mom. So guys, my name is Atoya. I am a multi-passionate mom of two. I like to say that I have a perfect duo, okay? Because I have a nine-year-old son, but I also have a three-year-old girl. And she'll actually be four in a few days. Her birthday is right after Christmas. So imagine that. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm multi-passionate about a lot of things, but um dealing and helping moms find their way and just kind of design the life that they deserve and that they want is really my sweet spot right that's really my zone of genius um i am a wife i'm married to an amazing black man any day you can find me screaming from the rooftops of loud black love i love 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 all things black love i am let's see i'm also an author about two years ago i wrote self-published my very first book yay <laughs> and i say first because there are parts of me that feels like i have another book in me okay mm -hmm. so we'll see yes you know, when god actually releases me to do that so i have a book titled girl you have purpose um also a speaker i've had the opportunity to have been blessed to be invited to many platforms um typically discussing and my key topics really revolve about around things concerning black women uh, i've talked about everything from self-care to how to build purpose-based businesses um and let's see what else finally i am a mindset coach i am a coach for professional women and again specifically working moms because i know that there are unique challenges that we face, you know, we're killing it in our careers, but we are also trying to find that sweet spot between our career and raising and, you know, raising our children and nurturing our families. And with that being said, what drew you to professional women? I know you talk about it, but you speak highly of professional women design a life that they love without getting burnt out or overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, the short answer to that, Arvilla, is that I was her. OK, mm -hmm. I was the woman that was doing well, you know, in both my personal and professional life. But I found myself in this space of being overwhelmed in this space of having periods of prolonged stress um, and just getting to a point where I crashed. And so it, it's funny because it happened at a time where I feel like I was really experiencing a, a lot of elevation. My husband and I. We had a destination wedding, so we were planning our wedding for Jamaica at the time. Um, I was a relatively new mom because my mm -hmm. son was younger than two, and I had just been promoted on my job. So I now had a team, you know, and I had people reporting to me the whole nine. Mm -hmm. So if you had a conversation with me, it's like, girl, you know, you're doing good. You know, God is blessing you in all these different areas of your life. And that was true. Mm -hmm. And it was all good until it wasn't. So... <laughs> So one day um, I was sitting at work and the room began to spin and I was so dizzy that the only thing that I could do was really just lay out on the floor and like try to pull myself together. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I realized that I had been showing up for all of the things, everybody and every other role that I played, but I wasn't necessarily showing up and taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And so 
in an attempt to kind of dig myself out of this hole that I felt like I found myself in, I reached for something that I always knew, which was fitness. Mm. And so, you know, I'm like, surely if I start, you know, taking care of better care of myself again and watching my nutrition and all of that, just kind of getting back to what I was used to, right. that I would start to feel better and start to be able to deal with my stress and all of that a little bit better. And so that led me to being a fitness coach. And oh, so okay. I started, yeah. So I um I started having like private groups where I would help women lose weight. And then working with these women on that aspect, that's when I realized like we really need more support in just doing life, not just mm -hmm. losing weight. Right. And these women just so happen to be professional women that were working moms. And so the journey kind of led me here, you know. And when I arrived, I was like. This is my space. This is it. You know? Yes. So that's what it is. <laughs> that's okay. how I start working with working moms. Yep. I love it. And with that being said, work-life balance is something you hear about, but never really actually either live through or even see. Um, is there truly a work-life balance? This is like the million dollar question. <laughs> this is like the million dollar question. And it's, this is a really good question, Arvilla, because it plan, this is something that I plan to kind of dig more into on my social media platforms going forward um, in 2023. So when you think about balance, right, just the mere meaning of the word, it kind of means that you're trying to give equal weight to something, right? Yes. And um, as women, a lot of the times when we talk about balance, what we're really trying to communicate is that, listen, hey, I need to take all of these roles that I play. I need to take, you know, me being a mom, me being a wife, you know, me being an employer or even entrepreneur, having my own business. I need to take all these things that I do right. and I need to be able to show up and do them in a way that doesn't stress me or, you know, that doesn't burn me out or doesn't cause me any overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I offer my clients a different perspective because along my journey, I went looking for balance, but what I found was flow. Mm. So I like to tell my clients that what you're really trying to achieve is flow. You're no. trying to have all these things kind of work together in a way where it brings more harmony into your life. And mm -hmm. when you do that, that's really when you'll find this peace, you know, this fulfillment. You'll move away from feeling like your days are chaotic and all yes. of that. Because... I mean, Arvilla, the truth is, you know, there are going to be times where you have to put more time and energy into being a mom, mm -hmm. more time and energy into your career or your wife, or being a wife or whatever the case may be. So I won't say that there is not work-life balance, right. but I will say that you will probably be more successful reaching for more work-life flow. Right. I like how you said that. It, it is a really you do want things to flow together. Yeah. More, maybe not balance, but maybe flow together. Work yeah. together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, this can be a kind of jarring concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what do you see? What do you mean? We can't find balance kind of like, you know, but right. once people sit with it, I think that they're, um, you know, they, they accept it a little bit better. And it feels that like something that you can actually accomplish. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I had this aha moment, maybe. I don't know. It's been quite some time now. I've even thought about going through my social media and just removing everything that says balance. <laughs> but I'm like, girl, no. Like, you know, it's important for people to see your journey and how you evolve and grow as well. So that's more important to me than trying to just erase it all. But yeah, I feel like more so there definitely is um, work life flow that you can achieve. And I think that you won't stress yourself out mm. trying to give this equal weight that's you know, it. to all of these things. Mm hmm. I love how you put that. And I, when you said it, uh, when you were actually saying that, I thought about it. When I do balance, like you said, you think about it as a pie. You're trying to make sure everything has a perfectly cut pie. But then right. like you said, there's going to be seasons you may have to work harder at your job or mm -hmm. harder at your marriage or harder at the kids. So that little perfectly one eighth slice pie is no longer that it's one half of the pie. You know, right. so you're like, this is not balanced no more. <laughs> it's not balanced at all. <laughs> at all. At all. So it's like, how do I, but, and when you said flow, that takes that stigmatism off of it. Like you have to find balance. Like yes. if this flows and I only got half a percent, one eighth, one yep. third, it flows together. And I can work with that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Doesn't it just that. even feel better when you say flow? It does. <laughs> yes. 
because I'm like flow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can flow with that and not try to balance it. Right, right. I love that. And especially, I was reading a survey, I think it was by Mental Health Foundation. They stated that 58% of employees um, with unhealthy work life balance feel irritable, 34% feels anxious, 27% feel depressed. Now, as women, how can we separate our work life from our home life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avila, one of the first things that we can do, and it sounds so simple, but it's so hard for a lot of us, is to pause. Mm -hmm. We just have to take a minute to pause. And then in the pause, what you want to do is really figure out what's important to you. Okay. What things are your priorities? Like if I were to ask you, okay, tell me your top three priorities in your life. For a lot of us, our work, our job, and our careers, probably not going to be in the top three. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe top five for some, maybe even not in the top 10 for others. Mm -hmm. But when you decide what's important to you, you take that time, you pause, you decide what's important to you. Okay. Then you plan to honor these things, right? You plan mm -hmm. to honor these things and you plan to how am I going to show up and make sure that I'm taking care of these things that are important to me. Once you do that, your work and your career is going to organically fall where it needs to, right? Mm -hmm. And so an example of this is I know that for me, my spirituality, okay, my health and my family are the top three things that are important to me. When my career or my job starts to negatively impact that, yeah. then I know that I need to kind of realign some things, right? I know mm -hmm. that I need to reassess and, and just do some getting back to what's important. Right. So you can create more balance when you really understand what's important to you. And then when you decide to honor those things, right? Okay. Another way is practical stuff. Like when you leave work, leave mm, work, leave it work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when you leave work leave work and i know that's hard because we're living in a time where we have so much remote work you know and and mm -hmm. we're on all of these different apps to stay connected to our our employers and all this kind of stuff but when you leave work leave work you know decide that okay my um you know my my work here is done and so yeah. now i'm going to be a toya for the rest of the evening or i'm going to be mom for the rest of the evening or whatever the case may be we just have to set the boundaries right we mm -hmm. we can't allow people to have this unnecessary access to us at all times all time. I yes. it. you know i used to be at home seven eight o'clock at night i'm answering emails or mm -hmm. You know, I'm not finishing something because I'm so anxious to get it done that I'm I'm not closing I'm not closing my computer until the time I go to bed. We just right. have to turn it off. We have to set the boundary. Okay. Um, let's see. Another thing we can do is manage our expectations of ourselves and manage the expectation that other people have of us. If okay. you're at work and you're always the go-to, you always take on extra projects. You know, they know that you're always going to say yes. You're going to stay late then of course they're going to keep on piling stuff on you, you know, but we have to kind of manage that. I had a girlfriend, Arvilla, she was killing it at her job, right? Uh -huh. Every time she kind of got her workload to something that felt comfortable to her, they would be like, oh, you're doing well. Here's more work, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm like, girl, that's backwards. That makes no sense. Like your reward for doing well is more work. Right. So she kind of had to speak up and let them know like, hey, I want to be you know, contribute as much as I can. However, you know, it's a little bit unfair that you're rewarding my good, you know, my performance with additional right. work. So that comes into managing the expectations that other people have of you. Um, and manage it for yourself as well, because you have to realize that you're only one person. That's it. Yes. And this job, honestly, is going to go on with or without you. Tell um, the truth. Yes. Girl, I graduated from Mississippi State University and mm -hmm. recently their coach passed away, their football coach passed away. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine as a, a football coach of an institution, you probably spend a lot of time away from your family, oh, yes. you know, or whatever. And before, and from the outside looking in, before they could even bury this man good, they were already kind of putting fillers out there about who was going to take his place. Wow. So I'm like, man, 
you know, it's going to keep rolling without you. Yes. <laughs> With or right. without you. So, you know, you just got to kind of keep that in, in perspective, right? Yes. You don't mm-hmm. want to kill yourself and, and, and do all of that for someone who's not going to, probably not going to do all of that for you. So, yeah. <laughs> No, I love those tips. Those are tangible. Now, what are some signs your work-life balance needs a reset? Mm. So, uh, let's see. A few months ago, I was speaking with a group of women, and there was this particular woman who was very vulnerable with me, and she was sharing with me all of the challenges that she was having because of the stress on her job. Mm-hmm. And she had gotten to the point where even to get a good night sleep, she had to medicate. She was mm-hmm. taking like sleeping pills, you know, drinking the wine, yeah. just in an attempt to rest. And so all of us, our, you know, our situations may not be that severe, but an interruption of your sleep, an interruption mm-hmm. of your rest, where you're never feeling like you're truly getting, um, you, you, you're never rested because you right. can't turn your mind off, Right. Mm -hmm. Always feeling anxious, feeling uneasy, sure signs, you know, that you need to reset. Um, I I'm a strong believer that your emotions will manifest in your physical health. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Yes. If you're having headaches, you know what I'm saying? If you you're pulling up to the job and your stomach is just like, oh, you know, I won't do this again. (laughs) You know, those are sad. Girl, I have been in a situation where I had to pray myself out of bed in the morning it was literally, <laughs> it was literally like god if you don't move my feet i can't mm-hmm. get like right. I don't want to go you know what i mean yes but you know when it's not right you know okay. you can feel it and having that anxiety having that stress and just and even our villa sometimes your people that love you can be a mirror for you Mm-hmm. You know, they'll say to you, you know, I see that girl, that job looks like it's stressing you out or you're working all the time. Are you sure you're OK? You know, you have to pay attention when people that love you and really know you kind of start saying and seeing things like that um, with your life and how you're interacting with your job and stuff like that. Now, in your opinion, as you say that, <clears throat> at what point like the work life balance and probably primarily the work? Would you say to be comfortable to say, you know what, this job is not it no more. You know, it's taking up too much time. And I'm like, when do you think you should pull the trigger? Because, you know, as women, we'll stay somewhere. We're usually faithful mm-hmm. to something, you know, mm-hmm. a relationship, job or whatever. So we'll try to work as far as we can. But if this is messing with home life, this is messing with us mentally. When do you pull the trigger and say, you know what, this job is not worth it? You know, I think first that you should try to like I like we just previously talked about mm-hmm. first you should try to find the boundary right you okay. should pro- try to find to set the boundary um and if you can't if you set the boundary you know you leave work at work mm-hmm. it's highly likely that you're going to start to feel less stress right okay. but let's just say for some reason all of these things don't work you know you set the boundary you leave work at work you don't give people access to you that don't need it you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You're not necessarily concerned about what's going on there when you're outside of the building or whatever the case may be. If you've done all these things and it's still bringing strife into your life, it's time to let it go. Okay. It, it really is. And I, I believe that sometimes God will make you uncomfortable mm-hmm. for so That's long yes. just to show you that it's time to move. So if you've tried everything that you possibly could to make this situation work for you and you, you're still uncomfortable, I would take that as a sign. Like God is telling me that this is not my place. You know okay. what I mean? That yes. it's time for me to move. It's time for me to re- get somebody to else move. to do. <laughs> yes. yes. I was just hoping. I was like, okay, I've been in a job like that. It's like, you know, you try to do boundaries, tell them what you, you cannot do politely. Mm-hmm. But then they still push you and it's like, well, Lord, how much longer am I supposed to stay here? You know, yep. without going mentally crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And girl, you listen, you've exhausted everything you could. Yes. Baby, you got to get somebody else to do it. It's time for me to go. <laughs> no, girl, yes. I was yes. like, you know, like praying just to, to get to the job because it became so stressful. And I felt it like even when I got to work, it was like in my jaws. Like, yes. The stress of the bottom. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, was like, I, I can't keep this cannot be my job. Listen, funny story, Armilla. Yeah. I have, um, you know, I was at a job when I was much younger. And of course, I didn't really understand all of this at the time. But 
I knew that it was time for me to go. So um, I was at a job, had been there for maybe about three or four years. And the opportunity came for me to take a contract position. Now with contract work, typically what happens is you make a lot of money um, Mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. right? Right. And so this contract came along and it was supposed to be like a year. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I was like, I don't care if it's a date. Okay, <laughs> I am, I am leaving. Yeah. So at this particular time, you know, a lot of my friends and family, you know, that we had never been introduced to contract work. Where I was from, you just didn't see it a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so they thought I was crazy. They was like, "Girl, you gonna leave a permanent job for country? Baby, it could be for an hour." Okay, I am about to go. So when you have that, you know that it's time for you to move. Right. You don't care what happens. Right. You know, you, you're willing to take that jump and you just have to trust and have faith that God is going to meet you, you know, in the places that you go next. Right. I love that. Because what like working with a lot of single moms, sometimes that's the only job because it fits the kids' schedule. You know, you can do things that other jobs won't do. So it's like, okay. Before I sit here and kill myself over this job, what do I need to be doing to make sure I don't get to this point? And if I need to make the next move, how do I do so? So, yeah, yes, yes. Now, one thing I can say I was guilty of when I work, I work my nine to five is with my breaks, whether it's a lunch break, regular uh, 15 minute break or lunch break. I wouldn't take them. So I'm eating my lunch at my desk. Mm -hmm. I would stay at my desk for my 15 minutes to answer a few emails. Or when it came to PTO, I wasn't taking them because I was trying to stay ahead. Yeah. But what I come to find out, it might have put me ahead uh, temporarily. Right. But mentally, I kept going further and further out to where I burnt myself out. Now, in your opinion, how can this damage your mental health with, you know, if you don't take any time off? Yeah. You know, I think that for a lot of us, we don't really realize the impact that this 15 minutes or even five minutes our villa can have, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that this one day off can give you a total refresh, you know? And so when we are not taking our breaks, when we are, you know, not taking time off, to me, I think we are training ourselves to operate under prolonged periods of chaos and stress. Right. Even when we don't feel it, right? It ain't everything ain't got to be going just haywire right. for you to need to take a step back. And so, in my opinion, you're really setting yourself up to get to the point that you were, to get to feeling anxious, to get to feeling stressed and sort of depressed and being blue. Might not you may not even realize that this is what's causing it. You right. Know? Right. But, we all need that time to step away for every once in a while. Even if you love your job, I still think it's important that you take your breaks and that you use your PTO. Because again, like we just said, the show is going to keep on rolling. Yes, it will. Yeah, right? It's going to keep on rolling. So yeah, I encourage, I encourage everybody. Girl, you got PTO, use it. Okay? Especially for the people whose PTO doesn't roll over. Right. You know, some jobs their PTO doesn't roll over. Yeah, mm-hmm. girl, use it because, like I said, like you talked about the studies, there are studies that show that even five minutes of just being mindful and mm. breathing can have such a positive effect on your mental health. So yes. just imagine just never taking that pause. Pausing is just so, so, so important for us. Boost your mood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It even helps us deal with stressful situations. So, yeah. Most definitely that PTO yeah. <laughs> and those breaks, sis. Yes, wonders for your mental health. So yeah, okay. And, and the reason why I bring it up because, like I said, I was guilty of doing it. But my dad, now he he's the total opposite. He he loves to work. Mm-hmm. So my dad probably has four hundred hours of PTO. Wow. <laughs> he don't. <take> it. <laughs> he continue. He loves his job. And he continues. So I was like, but does that affect males then differently than females? Because my dad has time just built up. And I'm like, dad, are you going to take time off? And it's like, even when it's time to take time off, it's like, uh, I can still go to work. And he, he don't like, even know what to do with himself, right? He wouldn't even right. know what to do with himself. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> like, if I had 400 hours, I would have figured out. Girl, I've been yeah. taking off for months at a yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, every, every month would be a week off. I'm like, yeah. I would figure out how to take some time off. But he doesn't. So I was like, well, am I the only one that kind of felt the same way? Like, 
you got to take that time off. No, it just burns you, out. you need it. You, you definitely, you need it. You need to walk. I mean, and not even just in our, with our work and our careers, we uh-huh. need that breather as a wife. We need oh, that yeah. breather as a mom, you know, um, you can experience burnout in, in so many different areas of your life. You just have to be careful. Like sometimes you just need to step back a little bit and just be, you know, we That's have it. gotten to the point where we're always in hustle mode, grind mode, or we're always doing something or trying mm-hmm. to obtain something. But sometimes we need to just, just be, just be. Mm-hmm. Now you did a post about, um, some women, you know, work at nine to five, aligning with their purpose. Mm-hmm. Others have nothing to do with it, and it it funds their lifestyle. But how can you find purpose outside of your day job? It's already consuming mo- most of your time. Right, you're trying to yeah. find work life balance, but at the same time, you still want to find your purpose. Something yeah. that you can keep fighting towards when everything's going crazy. You know, my experience with that has been. <clears throat> First, let me just say that a lot of us have done a very good job of following this like unsaid protocol, right? Like, you know, you graduate high school and then you go to college and then you have this career or something like that. Some people go military or whatever, but there's kind of like this standard, these standard paths that a lot of us were um, conditioned to take. And so we never really colored outside of the line, per Mm -hmm. se. And so, you know, we may get into these careers and we may be good at it, but then we realize like this really doesn't bring me any joy. You know, I'm not fulfilled in any type of way. You know, I'm really doing this because like you like, you know, like the post said, it funds my lifestyle. Right. It it helps me take care of my family. Uh And so when you find yourself in these situations, I tell people to lean into that part of you that you feel like organically creates impact in another person's life that's where your purpose is Mm. you know and for me my purpose had nothing to do with my job but it showed its face on my job so let me Mm -hmm. explain that just a little bit more um in every evaluation that i had there were always comments about how i was able to um positively affect the morale of the team how was, I was able to just pull people together, um, how I was able to take the, the struggles that the team may be having, breaking down in a way, and let's say, let's execute it this way. You know, right. there was always something in there about how I was able just to work with people. I even had a, a chair at my desk that people, they called it like, I'm coming to sit at a toy's chair because I need to talk to her. Right. You know? And so this wasn't all the time things that had to do with something that was happening professionally. Sometimes Mm -hmm. these, you know, people just need someone that they can go to even on a personal level. And so we are living in a time with all this stress, all this anxiety, Mm -hmm. people are like losing their minds. They just need an outlet. Right. Right. So I didn't think anything of this for a very long time, but one day God said to me, Atoya, do you realize that this is your thing? Okay. Mm -hmm. So my job what hr had attached to my name wasn't my purpose but my purpose showed its face in that environment if Mm, that makes sense that does sometimes we can be missing it because we're so frustrated with the job we're so we so think that we don't have any time that it may rear its head in other ways Mm -hmm. just be open to seeing it you know what i mean yeah be open to seeing it and then also, like I said, lean into that part of you that's just organic. You know, um, no, you may not have a lot of time outside of your job, but there is something that you do that people um, gravitate to you because of. They ask you questions about it or they feel like you just have it all. It can be difficult, you know, because like you said, your job is consuming a lot of your time. So it's kind of like I don't even have you know, the opportunity to even think about what right. I, I don't even have the time to think about this. Let let go, because it can be overwhelming to even yes. think about what is my purpose and just kind of lean into who you organically are. Pay attention to the things that people ask you and they come to you for, okay. you know, what is creating impact in the life. How are you, how, what are you doing that's helping someone? And your purpose is usually not far away from these things. Okay, and as we talk about that, what prompted you to write Girl, You Have Purpose? Oh, what prompted me to write my book? Um, I found myself.
myself in a space years ago, like before the book and all of that, where I really felt like I didn't have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I just did not know, you know, what God wanted me to do. How was I supposed to like put my mark in the earth? I had no idea. Yeah. And going through that, it can be, it's saddening, you know, it can make you like not feel like you're very worth, you're not worth anything or, you know, you just kind of feel unfulfilled. Right. And so I wrote the book as a guide to showing women like, hey, even when you think you don't have anything, you have the sauces like, yes. you know, and I wrote it as a guide to say, hey, look here, try this, explore this, you know. And I promise you, there is something that you were created to do. And so I wanted it to show women that, hey, girl, you got it. OK, <laughs> I, love I love that. And I want to put this out there. If you've been listening to this podcast or watching this audio up until now, send me an email saying you watched it and I'm going to gift you a free copy of Girl, You Have Purpose. Yay! So that way I know you've watched it up until then or you listen up until then you're going to get a free copy of that. So send me an email. I'll put the information in the show notes and let me know. Yes, that's good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's and you know, another thing too about writing the book, Arvilla, um, girl, I decided to do this once I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, my second uh -huh. child. So, okay, it makes totally no sense to try to write a book while you're pregnant and doing all this stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I felt a pull to be a demonstration to my children Mm. that you can be something that you've never seen like yes. you know i didn't know an author we had you know writing a book like in my family that was girl what you right, know what i mean right. so i don't know i just wanted to be a, a something to have something that was a tangible demonstration to them like hey you may not have never ever seen this but you can do and you can be whatever you want you know there is something inside of you that god gave you you know that's impactful so that was a that had a big big part you know in me writing the book as well and i love how you said that you did that for your daughter because you're right especially in our community we don't we're now seeing more but we're seeing more women uh, a black woman vice president you know we're yes. seeing things that we've never seen before so yes. to not experience it beforehand like our generation it's like it was never seen before but now yes. our younger generation are starting to see it so it's like Okay, <laughs> I can do this, right? Yeah, start doing it. Yeah, and I love that you know, just saying purpose is kind of a big word for a lot of people because they spend their 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s still not knowing what their purpose is. And like you said, sometimes it's right there in your face, mm -hmm. but you're thinking it's supposed to be something that's supposed to be like you know, grandiose. You're supposed yeah. to bring it right there. You're like, that's what God's gonna say, this is it, but it's yeah. like. No. I tell people all the time, purpose is usually not for you, it's for others. Absolutely. It's what I you've been through. More. Yes, it's what you've been through or something that you are going through and you're giving that back to others. So when yep. people think about purpose, it's not about you, it's about others. And sometimes it's hard to understand that until you've done some life. You know, yep. you've been through yep. some things in life to realize, you know what? This is my thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. This is my thing. Yeah. This is the thing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being with me. And before I go, please tell my audience how they can connect with you online. Okay, so guys, um, you can, yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram more than any other platform. Okay. And um, it's just my name, Atoya Follins. You can visit my website, same thing, Atoya Follins. You can kind of hang out with me a little bit on Facebook, but like I said, I'm not there <laughs> as much, <laughs> but you can also find me there. So on all platforms and my website, Atoya Follins. Now, do you have any upcoming events coming on in 2023? I don't have any upcoming events, but I okay. do have the launch of um, a group program called Breathe. And it's going to be uh, for working moms. We're going to go through four weeks of me showing you basically how to create this flow in your life. Like I tell them, you're basically walking around holding your breath, right? But you feel like you're holding your breath, trying to get everything done. By the time you finish this program, you'll be able to breathe again. Well, what better way to start 2023? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will make sure that I have all our information in the show notes. Like I said, if you listen to this podcast up until this far, please send me an email and I am gifting one person this free book to kind of get your year started off right. 
And also, ladies, the reason why I put this podcast, this particular episode, as we go into this new year, mental health is something that we should continue to work on and understand that work-life balance is mental health. You know, you want to make sure that you are taking care of everything. Like Atoya said, it's not balance, it's flow. Yes. So get into the habit of thinking, I'm not trying to create work-life balance, but maybe it's work-life flow. Yes. Do what comes easy to you. And if you struggle to do that, reach out to Atoya, join the, the class and see what you can take away from it. That way, when you finish the rest of the year, your whole new outlooks look totally different. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Atoya, for joining me. I appreciate it. Your time. Thank you. And ladies, I hope this was a blessing this week. Uh, until next week, you guys have a great week. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.